Hey everybody, Neil McNeil here, and I am in the midst of packing for my big trip back east. But I decided to take a break from all this packing madness to answer you guys. Yesterday I posted a video asking what you guys wanted to see more of, and so many of you told me to drink. I think this is considered peer pressure, but I'm okay with it. So I decided I want to give it a try with a new segment I like to call Comically Drunk. These videos are going to be devoted to giving you guys a history lesson on some of my favorite comic book characters. I know, clever, right? And what better way to kick off this series with one of my all-time favorite teams, the X-Men. So I've got my six pack of cider and a bag of popcorn, and you know what, we're just going to go for it. Alright, so for those of you who don't know, the X-Men started off as a team of five at Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters. Jean Grey, Cyclops, Beast, Iceman, and Angel. And naturally, the very first villain they ever faced in X-Men issue one was Magneto. And if you're anything of a Marvel buff like I am, you know that the X-Men series didn't really take off until the mid-70s. Yeah, apparently nobody wanted to read a comic about a bunch of freaks running around and destroying New York City. So the series relaunched with an all new, all different team, including Banshee, Wolverine, Storm, Colossus, Sunfire, and that other bitch. Oh yeah, Thunderbird was there, and um, Nightcrawler. And in this reboot, apparently the original five X-Men were trapped on an island, or they were trapped by an island. There's, there's a big rock that likes to eat people called Krakoa, and the X-Men, the original X-Men, were trapped there. And Professor Xavier used his um, brain powers to summon these new X-Men. After both the all-new team and the original teams, you know, kind of mutated into the a new super team, you see what I did there with the word mutated? We were then introduced to the Shi'ar uh, aliens. And then Professor X got freaky with an alien lady who was also some sort of queen? Empress? Empress? Something along those lines. And on their journey back to Earth from uh, Alien World, their, their ship was crashing and Jean Grey discovered that she had all these new powers and she could control things with her mind. In the midst of controlling stuff, she died. But di she didn't die. She rose from the ashes like a phoenix and became the phoenix. You get it? Because she rose. She literally rose from the ashes of her fallen ship and was this like new uh, empowered uh, lady. It's actually not Jean Grey. It's a cosmic firebird that decides that it wants to inhabit Jean's body and then make a clone of her so that it could masquerade as Jean. Yeah, because she wanted to, you know, lead a life as a normal girl, but also um, this super awesome powerhouse of a woman. Wait, that's, that's the plot of Hannah Montana. And then that led into the Dark Phoenix saga with the Hellfire Club, which brought in Sebastian Shaw and Emma Frost as two new villains. We also met Kitty Pride, who was this, you know, young up-and-coming student at the Xavier Institute who wasn't really sure about her powers. She turns out later to be a super badass when she goes on her own adventures with Wolverine and they end up like bonding over Kung Fu in Japan and stuff. And with the introduction of Kitty Pride, we got this really cool story called Days of Future Past, where they go into the days of future past. You get it? Because they go into the future, but then the future goes into the past. It's kind of like a weird back to the future sort of thing where, you know, you're going back to the future. You have to you have to go, you go back in time, but then you have to go back to the future to get to where you belong. So the future is really your present time, and the present is a is a gift. Old Kitty Pride transforms her mind of her younger self into her older self, and then Kitty Pride is able to stop the assassination of a person and prevent this like whole big future with like evil mutant hunting robots that are like super super scary and just like want to get rid of all the mutants in the world, which would not be a good thing because that is racist. Now, uh, one of the X-Men's major uh, adversaries throughout the entire series was the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, led by Magneto. He, he, him and Professor Xavier had this whole history of like, oh, I love you, oh, I don't love you, oh, we're best friends. 
or something along those lines. Their their difference, they their and their beliefs on what mutants should become one day down the line um, differed, and they got mad. But Magneto believed in mutant supremacy, and Professor Xavier believed in mutant coexistence with the surrounding um, world, with the people. But the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants actually led to the discovery of a bunch of really cool other mutants, you know, such as Quicksilver, uh, the Scarlet Witch, who would go on later to become an Avenger. She pretty much committed mutant genocide in like the late 2000s, but we don't really like talk about that because it's it's sad. Um, from the Brotherhood, we also got Rogue, who um, is Mystique's adopted daughter, and if she touches you, she becomes you. Or like she like absorbs your life essence, so she essentially is like you squared or something along those lines. I don't know. It's it's her her power is really weird. Um, in the 80s, the X-Men split into two teams where it was a uh, Cyclops leading one and then Storm leading the other, and they like were trying to fight for supremacy and to fight to see who would lead the X-Men. And Storm had this really cool mohawk that was probably not important to the story at all and was just there for aesthetic reasons, but it was still a really cool mohawk. Over the past like 20 years or so, I think they've like gone back and like redone some of the storylines to like make to make it a little bit more sense. But really it's just been confusing because you have like 60 years worth of history and it's just who who the hell is paying attention to all this? Because I sure as hell am lost. Alright, so I hope you learned something from this week's edition of Comically Drunk. I really don't think I did a good job explaining it though. Now if there's any information you may think I've gotten wrong, or any other teams you want to see me cover in Comically Drunk, leave me a comment below. That about wraps it up for my Tuesday video. Check back on Thursday, I'm going to be in New York State, headed over for my sister's wedding this weekend. That poor, poor son of a bitch she convinced to marry her, I do not feel sorry for him. If you're curious as to what my sister Jen is like, picture this, but in lady form. And about three inches shorter. Thanks again for watching, if you like what you saw here today be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And as always, be sure to let me know in the comments below what you want to see in future videos. Until Thursday, I'll catch you later nerds. You know, it's never considered drinking alone when you do it on the internet. Because in cyberspace, you're always surrounded by your friends. Most of whom are probably 40 year old men posing as 12 year old girls. <laughs>